The following podcast was recorded on Thursday, June 30th, 2022, featuring Sam Rines of Arbor Data Science. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at arborresearch.com or by emailing Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Welcome everyone to the latest edition of Talking Data. I'm your host, Kristen Radish with Arbor Research and Trading, joined today by our commentator, Sam Rines of Arbor Data Science. Welcome, Sam. Hey, Kristen. Good to see you. Today, we wanna to talk about the collapsing crypto market. It's been a very rough quarter. Let's talk about what is driving the price decline and why it's relative to the overall market. Is it a collapse or is it a buying opportunity? It's it's kind of funny because I don't think it, it's it's a collapse. We know that. I mean, prices have fallen off a cliff. But is it a buying opportunity? I I, I don't really think it is necessarily yet. And this is this is where it gets kind of fun. The problem and blessing of cryptocurrency is that it's the tip of the spear risk asset. Right when risk is on, crypto is going to do well. It's it's basically a hedge against not inflation. It does not hedge against inflation. I think we've solved that equation forever, right? We we have inflation right now. It is not performing as an inflation hedge, ergo, done. Like, I think that argument can be put to rest and never brought back up. But it does perform very well in terms of being that risk asset, right? That tip of the spear, first thing to move, it's going to go harder and faster uh, than other risk assets generally. And I think I think that it's kind of proven that case over the course of both, you know, kind of going through the cycle that we've seen recently. Uh, and coming out of COVID, you had a big rally in crypto, you had a big rally in NASDAQ and tech stocks, and you had a general market rally overall. You kind of move from that into when the Fed began to signal it was tightening, it was just, it was sell crypto first, then sell tech stocks, then sell everything else, basically, except for maybe oil and maybe a little bit of food. Uh, but I think that's that's really the mentality to approach crypto with at this point, is that it's not necessarily a buying opportunity until you begin to see the Fed begin to pivot and liquidity come back to markets in mass. That's that's really where I would say the, the crypto pain is unlikely to end until the Fed pain ends. And walk us through this crypto pessimism leading trends. This, this is this is kind of fun, right? So crypto brought us a whole bunch of terms that I, I really wish it hadn't. Uh, you know, HODL, hold on for dear life, not going to make it, GMI, uh, and have fun staying poor. Probably my favorite one, given that, you know, have fun staying poor. You know, crypto, crypto didn't make a bunch of people very, very wealthy, at least on paper. And it also, you know, destroyed an awful lot of wealth very, very quickly. Uh, so I think that the have fun staying poor you know, meme is probably one of those ones that isn't going to make a comeback anytime soon, um, particularly when we've seen you know call uh, everything from Luna go to going to zero twice uh, to some of the other blowups uh, that we've seen. But I do think that it's worth paying attention to the underlying trends, right? Hold on for dear life I was really trending uh, around last summer, and you know, that that was a pretty good leading indicator uh, for the December peak. Right. And then not going to make it. Guess what? That was that was that was pretty that was pretty peaky right around the time that the crypto wasn't going to make it when it was collapsing. Uh, so I do think that it's worth watching the trends around. You know what's what's being used, what's being searched for, um, you know, et cetera. But another fun thing to think about is that you know this is this coming holiday is July fourth, and there's going to be an op awful lot of people that told their family, hey, you know, you got to get into crypto, you got to get into crypto, that are going to barbecues, and those are going to be very uncomfortable uh, <laughs> conversations. Um, I'm looking forward, there's there's going to be, I think, some pretty great Twitter stuff coming out of this. So I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to uh, the have fun, staying poor uh, memes coming out of the July fourth holiday. And let's take a look next at crypto coins and market caps and talk about, you mentioned it uh, just a moment ago, talk about the wealth effect. Oh, it's massive, right? And this is this is something that I think was overlooked in a pretty in a pretty significant way. Is yeah, crypto's, you know, about the same, you know, at its peak was about the same size as Apple, right? About two trillion dollars. Uh, you know, that doesn't sound like much in an economy that, you know, generates call it twenty-four, twenty-five trillion dollars. 
in GDP a year, but it's a significant amount of incremental wealth that was created from December 20, you know, of December of uh, 2020 uh, to the peak, right? That's, you know, that's basically a 6x, right? That's a lot of wealth that was generated on paper. That's a lot of spending on things like Lamborghinis, on apartments in Miami, on, you know, thing, you know, maybe house down payments. That's a lot of things that people, you know, use their wealth to do. Uh, so it was a significant generator of wealth, similar to what we would expect from an equity market, but again, on steroids. Um, that wealth effect is going to have a significant uh, effect when you go, when you almost retrace the, call it the crypto boom coming out of COVID from 2.2 trillion back down to about 800 billion, you know, that's, and probably today, 600 billion, uh, that's going to be a significant incremental hit to millennials and other uh, generations that were levered pretty heavily to the crypto market. Uh, it's not necessarily going to be, you know, like the NASDAQ melting down for, or falling in, in half. That would be a lot more wealth termination. Uh, but it is going to be a significant uh, driver of those incremental spends. Right? And I think that's going to maybe generate a few more people coming back to the labor force. I don't think it's going to be a wave of people coming back by any stretch, but it will generate some interest in coming back to the labor force, you know, not day trading crypto, um, et cetera, because I think a lot of the easy money and a lot of the fun times uh, came and went very, very fast. And how have stable coins fared? Mm. Well, this is interesting. If you if you, <clears throat> if you kind of forget that Luna disappeared overnight uh, and went to zero, stable coins have held up a lot better than one might anticipate relative to the rest of the market. Uh, that that to me is almost shocking. Right? Yeah, Luna disappeared overnight. That was a huge hit. Uh, but overall, you've seen relative stability in stable coins, which has been somewhat strange. Uh, part of that is you know they did have quite a bit of backing. Uh, come in very, very quickly from a lot of the larger crypto uh, players to make sure that they were shored up, to make sure that they weren't forced sellers. Uh, you know, you had a lot of holders come into the market and make sure that there was there was some liquidity there. And then you even had, you know, some pretty well uh, publicized, uh, call it, uh, I, I wouldn't call it seizures, but they were seizures of accounts that were very large and could have caused trouble for some of the stable coins uh, instead of, you know, being decentralized uh, like we thought they were or they were purported to be. Uh, you know, there were a lot of, there were there was actually a blockchain that voted to seize a wallet so that it couldn't actually sell and mess up the uh, mess up the stability of the coin. So I think there's, there's an awful lot of um, stability here that I think is interesting. This is this is kind of the one thing that makes me maybe think that crypto is not dead. It's just mostly dead to steal from Princess Bride. Uh, but I do think that that is a really interesting scenario here, where you've had a you've had a pretty significant collapse overall in the market cap of crypto, but you haven't really seen the stable coins completely collapse, other than Luna. So, what does the decline mean for the future of crypto? That's where I, I don't. You know, I, I call it mostly dead, but you know, mostly dead isn't dead. I, I think it's it's more indicative of what crypto is actually used for uh, by investors, right? It's not used for an inflation hedge. Uh, we know that. It's used to exploit the Fed and liquidity. And when you have a significant amount of liquidity in the system, uh, you know, crypto is going to do well. And so when the Fed is easing, it's time to buy crypto. When the Fed is tightening, it's time to sell crypto. I think it's it's kind of that easy almost. So I don't think crypto is dead. I think it's going to have another run, but it's it's going to be when it's hedging against, you know, call it the next big, you know, boom in Fed guts, right? That that to me, when you when you begin to hear the Fed become more dovish, that's going to be good for crypto. When if the Fed continues to be hawkish, that's going to be bad for crypto. Uh, that that to me is the mentality to have around it is that it is a risk asset. It is not a hedge against inflation. It is not, you know, digital gold. It is it is basically the risk risk asset, and that that to me is uh, what really keeps it from being dead uh, in a lot of ways, right? You know, when we begin to see some dovishness, I, I'm guessing that you're going to begin to see an awful lot of crypto memes come back pretty fast. Sam, in summary today, what should we be watching for next? 
when it comes to when it comes to crypto, I would say what you want to listen for is when the Fed begins to blink. And when the Fed begins to blink, that's that's the sign to buy uh, crypto, or at least begin to pay attention to it, uh, because that'll be that'll be good overall, right? You could you could just buy the Nasdaq or you know buy high yield bonds, right? That'll be you know it'll it'll be many things. But crypto is likely to be the best performer uh, because it's been the worst performer, and it you know tends to move very dramatically and is somewhat a liquid. Uh, so I do think that that I would be paying attention to the Fed's rhetoric and incremental language. I don't really think it matters. Uh, when they, you know, if they're raising in July, they're going to raise in July. We all know that. Um, but I would be paying attention to the shift in the narrative and when that begins to actually permeate markets. On the broader front, I would be paying very close attention to what the dollar does. Uh, the dollar tends to uh, be the one that blinks first when it comes to the Fed and uh, policy. And so once the dollar begins to top, and begin to roll over. Um, that's that's a critical sign that the Fed has either gone too far and is breaking things, and will have to begin to backtrack, uh, or uh, that the Fed's narrative has begun to shift. So I'd watch the dollar. The dollar will tell you where crypto is going. Crypto will tell you where the overall risk market's going. Thank you, Sam, for your thoughts today. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. As a reminder, we are client-driven. If you have any questions or feedback on future topics, please let us know. For further information on Arbor Research, Bianca Research, or Arbor Data Science, please contact Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Thanks, and have a great day, everyone.